Welcome to the Natural Solutions Podcast. I'm Maya Atinello, your host, here to give you natural solutions for optimal health. This is episode number two. We are going to be talking about three different herbs and supplements that can help you with inflammation. Now, inflammation can mean topical inflammation, like if you've hit yourself and all of a sudden there's a bump or a swell, uh, something that's swollen, or it could be inflammation with inside of your body. And a lot of times the word inflammation is thrown around like it's something horrible and something Bad, but we're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into what inflammation exactly is today. We're also going to be looking at um, a very important herb called turmeric and um, curcumin. We're going to be looking at fish oil and also the vegan version, which is a marine type of oil. And um, lastly, we're going to be looking at a, another type of herb, in this case, a spice, which is ginger. So we're going to look at these top three um, supplementation uh, protocols that you can use to help with your inflammation. So that takes us on to inflammation. Let's talk a little bit about what inflammation is, because as I just mentioned, it's something that's kind of thrown around quite loosely, and we often blame everything on inflammation. So inflammation is the response of the immune cells to tissue damage, to pathogens that your body uh, might recognize. And uh, for example, if you, like I said, if you have a cut or a bump or something like that, and the purpose of this inflammation is to heal and to restore your cells. There's acute inflammation, then there's chronic inflammation, but basically what happens is your immune cells are recruited to go to the site of wherever the inflammation is and to combat any kind of pathogens that it encounters. And um, at the same time, it will help with healing. So some things that you might feel is pain, you might have some heat, but this is all because there is increased blood flow to the area of um, acute inflammation. With chronic inflammation, it's a little bit different because chronic inflammation uh, usually happens either because of um, an inability to clear an infection, maybe because you have an injury that keeps persisting, or because you have a compromised microbiome and gut barrier. If you're having a lot of exposure to toxins, whether that's even in your topical creams, in the foods that you're eating, or environmental exposures, sometimes this can also cause autoimmunity. And what happens is the immune system will break down and it'll attack itself cells. And this is something that we want to try to turn off and not let happen in the body, but sometimes it does. So um, sometimes there's also a lack of nutrients and you know the friendly microbiota that are involved in, in immune regulation. And a lot of times that will lead to more inflammatory responses. So inflammation is uh, kind of like being at war, it's a constant struggle, and your body is constantly fighting to um, make sure that more damage doesn't happen. That could include inflammatory signaling molecules, and um, T cells, and B cells, and all of the white blood cells that are involved. Um, and this can happen when we use these chemical weapons, these immune cells, and they have to break down certain pathogens or viruses. And unfortunately, sometimes, like I said, they can damage the self cells and dysregulate our systems. In general, there are different ways that we can measure inflammation in the body. And the first one that we use to measure inflammation is something called C-reactive protein. And your doctor can measure that for you, especially if you are um, or have been recently diagnosed. Um, with an autoimmune disease or some kind of um, inflammation and your doctor is trying to see even if you have problems with metabolic function, um, you can get your C-reactive protein tested. And that is one of the ways to measure um, common inflammation in the body and autoimmune inflammation. So over the past uh, few years, there has been a flowering plant that is actually part of the ginger family that has been very popularized and it's probably used more in Asian and Indian food more than in our Western diet. And this is called turmeric. Turmeric is a flowering plant, like I said, from the ginger family. And it's also very commonly used in curries. Um, it is part of the polyphenol group. 
Um, so it has plant compounds that have anti-inflammatory properties. And it has also been used in the body to increase the amount of antioxidants in your bloodstream. So uh, curcumin can be found in um, turmeric, and maybe you've seen it, they're kind of like a yellow orange color, and it can be extracted to produce supplements um, and that have a very high potency. So curcumin is unfortunately something that is poorly absorbed in um, our digestion. So there has been so many different types of formulations that people have um, been making over the years to improve its bioavailability. So curcumin is found in turmeric, like I just mentioned, and um, it's so powerful that it can actually be extracted um, from the turmeric and it can be used in high dosage to actually quell inflammation. It does remarkably reduce inflammation and increase antioxidants in the body, but unfortunately with any kind of plant, there is always more research that needs to be done in the areas of health to see how it can improve different inflammatory processes in our body. Maybe you've actually used the root turmeric in your cooking before. I actually never have. I've used more curcumin when we're making things like golden milk um, and it, it tastes pretty good. It, I feel like it needs to be mixed in with other things. Um, sometimes it can be overpowering, but it is super good because of its anti-inflammatory property. So how do you actually take this? Well, um, like I mentioned earlier, curcumin by itself is not absorbed very well. And a lot of people and a lot of studies have shown that if you pair curcumin with um, something that is called pepperine, which comes from black pepper or black pepper extract, then it's much more easier for your body to absorb it and it'll actually absorb it much better. And usually we um, recommend that you take curcumin or find a supplement that has curcumin with pepperine and you take about 500 milligrams three times a day. So you want to get up to about 1500 milligrams of curcumin and about 15 to 20 milligrams of this uh, pepperine. So usually if you're looking for a supplement, then you're going to look for um, make, to make sure that it has this black pepper extract inside of it. There are um, a few studies that show that it is quite effective in reducing inflammation, although it doesn't really depend on the type of um, illness or inflammation that you're suffering with, but in general, it's an overall very good anti-inflammatory. So next I want to talk about fish oil. And fish oil, I can tell you right now, every time I've taken it, it just, it's really horrible. I hate having to, you know, burp up that cod liver flavor. It's pretty gross. Um, but there's two kinds of fish oil. When we're talking about fish oil, we're talking about omega-3 fatty acids. And these are EPA and DHA. And they're usually found in fish, in animal products, and phytoplankton. So I had mentioned that there are marine sources of omega-3, so if you're a vegan, then it can be helpful uh, to, get, make, to make sure you're getting in your DHA and your um, EPA. So the fatty acids, EPA and DHA, are involved in regulating various biological processes, um, whether it has to do with inflammation or metabolic or brain pathways. Um, and the benefits of it are not just only for example, in people with heart problems or hypertension, that it can actually decrease triglyceride levels. So if you have high triglycerides, it's something that most doctors would probably recommend or your um, natural healthcare practitioner. Um, it can also be something that can help with um, mood and depression, but again, at the same time, it's really hard to say because there has to be a lot more studies done into these natural occurring um, nutrients that we have in food. So how do you take omega-3s? Well, depending if you're going to be taking fish oil or, or something like that, um, usually we start with 250 milligrams of EPA and DHA, which is pretty easy to find. And uh, you have to be careful um, with the type of fish oil you're taking, and they can have uh, 
kind of like a rancid flavor, so we have to be really careful. Um, Nordic Naturals is usually one of the most recommended and highly recommended um, supplements that you can take. Here's the thing, if you don't want to supplement with fish oil, then you can just eat fish. Uh, you can actually add in some, some plankton or some algae into your diet, but that also needs to be discussed with and specified by your healthcare practitioner to see exactly what the doses are that you need in order to maintain a um, healthy balance of EPA and DHA in your system. Okay, so I want to introduce you to ginger. Ginger is known in Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine, of which I am not a pro in. I Right now, I am deepening my studies in herbalism to become a master herbalist. But as far as Chinese medicine and Ayurveda go, um, ginger has been traditionally used to treat many symptoms, not just inflammation, but also um, if, for example, you have digestive issues or if you have nausea. Usually, you can take it in the actual um, root form or you can have it in a powdered form. Um, and it's also believed that it could possibly increase testosterone. So for men and women, that is actually good. Uh, obviously, depending if you have low testosterone or if your testosterone is too high, well, in the studies that there are on ginger, it seems to be that it does decrease inflammation quite considerably. So let's talk about the ways that you can actually include ginger into your diet. Well, one of our favorite ways is to actually grate ginger, like the ginger root, and put it directly into hot water and drink it as tea. I love the spiciness of ginger. Maybe you already include it in um, your diet or you have it in some of your meals, but that potent effect you can feel the ginger really does help, especially when you have a sore throat. Um, you can also get ginger in an extract, so you can get it in capsules. You can even get a liquid extract, so if you want to have it in droppers. But I would say that the easiest way to do it is to make a ginger tea, to grate it up, or to stick it in your food. Lately, one of the yummy things that we've been drinking at home is um, ginger and lemon and honey. I know, it's like so basic and so many people have recommended it before, um, but it's really nice because you can actually just take the skin off of the lemon and then you can actually grate up the, the ginger, like I said, and put it in your teapot with some boiling water and just let it sit there and steep. And then what I like to do is put some honey at the bottom of my teacup and then stick those things in and let it sit for a while and then mix it all up and uh, drink some of that. Wonderful thing about plants and nutrients, but especially plants, is that not only do they target specific pathways, but they target many different pathways in the body, and they can be used for multiple things. So whether it's pain um, that you feel chronically, whether it's localized inflammation, you can see that these types of plants and these types of nutrients are good for prevention and also for dealing with pain at that time. Remember, inflammation can come in two different ways. Like I mentioned, it can be localized, acute inflammation, or it can be chronic inflammation. Here's my disclaimer. I am not a medical doctor. I am just a natural healthcare practitioner. So please discuss any of these recommendations that I've made in this video, and please take them lightly. Do not take them as a prescription, but please speak to your healthcare practitioner before you start any of these protocols. Thank you so much for joining me for episode two of the Natural Solutions Podcast. You can click the links below in the show notes and join my five-day mini course, Lighter and Brighter, while I will show you how to develop the best diet for you, how to maintain a healthy body and a healthy immune system. Don't forget, you can also book a free 15-minute chat with me by clicking the link below that says book a chat with Maya to see how we can work together to optimize your health, help you with weight loss, or manage any type of chronic disease that you are dealing with at this point.